Welcome to this lesson on vector analysis. So for today, we'll be discussing integration of scalar and vector functions. In particular, in this video, we'll, we'll talk about line integrals. Kung ano yung mga line integrals, and in the succeeding videos, we'll talk about surface integra integrals and volume integrals. But before we go on to the line integral, we are in this part of vector analysis which touches yung, yung uh, concept ng vector calculus. Okay? Ano ba yung vector calculus? Vector calculus deals with the application of calculus on vectors. So more or less paggamit ng mga derivative and integrals sa mga vectors. May mga pagkakataon kasi na kailangan nating i-evaluate yung mga integrals, derivatives, and the other operations that uses integrals and derivatives. So itong mga rules na ginagamit natin na to can be applied to, ve to vectors. In particular, uh, meron tayong line, volume, and surface integration, uh, important to sa study ng electromagnetics. So, yung mga discussion natin with regards to integration of vector functions like line integral, surface integral, and volume integrals, uh, magagamit natin to sa electromagnetics 2 para mag-solve uh, and Mag maging reference dun sa pag-solve natin ng mga problems sa electromagnetics 2. Okay. Although sa ngayon, uh, ang gusto natin gawin is to define and describe paano ba natin yan gagamitin sa electromagnetics. Okay. So, for this particular video, we will discuss Lines, line integration and general ideas kung paano yung ginagamit sa electromagnetics. So, aside dun sa vector algebra, di ba? Gagamit din tayo ng mga uh, concepts ng vector calculus. Although hindi lahat Pero yung mga importante na gagamitin natin sa electromagnetism, katulad ng integration. So, meron tayo dyan single uh, integral, double integral, and then triple integral. So, meron din tayo mga close contour integrals, right? Then, meron tayo mga vector operators. So, sa, sa hiwalay na video, di-describe natin and mag-solve tayo ng concepts about the gradient. Ano ba yung gradient na yan? We also have divergence. And yung curl. Okay. And we'll touch on some theorems na related dun sa pag-aaral natin ng electromagnetism like uh, divergence theorem uh, Stokes theorem and we'll touch on Hemholtz Hemholtz theorem yeah. oh before I forgot uh Siguro isama na rin natin yung Laplacian, yung Laplacian. Laplacian operator. Kasi ito yung mga tools na gagamitin natin to explore electromagnetics. Okay? Okay? So let's start. 
So yung mga vector functions, uh, oftentimes, kailangan silang i-integrate. For example, if a force is specified and gusto natin makalculate yung work performed by a particular force, then kailangan natin i-integrate yung force na yun dun sa path kung saan siya uh, nandoon. So, alam naman natin that work is equal to the force times the di- displacement. So, and force and displacement are vector quantities. So, meron niyang uh, magnitude and direction. However, yung integration na nakukuha kasi natin sa ganito is scalar. No, yung work is a scalar quantity. In addition, the ideas of surface and volume integrals, kailangan natin yan uh, in the future sa pag evaluate ng mga vector fields. Okay. So, yung methods of setting up and evaluating these integrals will be given together with examples of their physical meaning. So, yung mga example natin dito, uh, yun yung mga essentials dun sa pag-aaral natin ng electromagnetics. Okay? Uh, siguro, bago tayo talaga mag-solve ng mga inline integrals, sa ngayon pa lang, uh, i-recall na ninyo yung mga uh, formulas and identities na ginamit ninyo sa study ninyo ng calculus kasi magiging magiging helpful yon para mas mapadali yung pag-aaral nyo ng mga line integrals. Okay? Dahil identical na, lang naman yung pagka-perform natin ng calculus dito. Okay? So, before we define line in, a line integral, let us consider uh, this very simple example of calculating the work perform, performed by a force as shown in this figure. So we have itong block and we applied a force F in here. Okay. Yung force na to, it is assumed to be space dependent and in an arbitrary direction in the plane. So para ma-calculate natin yung work performed by this force, um, mas maganda kung ma-separate natin yan into two components. Okay. So, ang formula natin, yan. So, meron tayong force, a uh, work is yung sum ng ating ito yung ating component sa x, okay? And then, ito naman yung ating component sa y. Binigay ko na yung kanyang uh, with angle na to, sa x side, meron tayong cosine alpha. Okay? Kung ito yung ating force, and uh, with the horizontal, nag-create siya ng alpha na angle. So, cosine alpha, dx. Then, sa vertical naman, we have beta. Okay? So, sine beta naman yung gagamitin natin. To calculate the work performed by this force, it is also possible to use um, yung principle ng vectors, the nature ng force being a vector. So, pwede natin gamitin yung paggamit ng dot product. Okay? Ang sabi dito, The force, the dot product of the force, vector, and yung kanyang component, unit vector dun sa direction ng kanyang unit vector is the same with this one. Okay? So, marerecall natin yan dun sa pinag-aralan nating dot scalar products. No? Pwede pala nating i- i-rewrite yung ating formula ng work into vector uh, functions using the scalar products. Okay. Yeah. Now, if we already have this uh, formula, we can now use yung pinag-aralan natin sa uh, 
coordinate systems na mga line uh, differential of length, right? So, kung maalala natin, uh, sa Cartesian, ganito yung formula ng differential ng length. Sa, we also have din sa cylindrical and spherical. Okay? So, just to simplify, ginamit ko lang dito example is yung sa Cartesian. Okay? So, we can now use yung definition natin ng differential of length um, to replace yung ating x dx, x hat dx, and y hat dy dito. Okay? So, kung mapapansin natin, parehas lang yan. No? So, ano ang simplification? We can now say that Bert the work done performed by a particular force vector is the integral for from the initial point to the final point of the dot product ng force and yung kanyang differential of length. So dito na papasok yung paggamit natin ng line integral. Okay. To further generalize the result, Ayan. We can now consider a vector field A and uh, the line integral of this vector A over uh, a particular path. Okay? So a particular path, we call it C, can be written in this form. Okay? And it is equal to the integral on this uh, path of the magnitude ng vector A, the magnitude ng differential of length, and the cosine of the angle, smaller angle between them. So, paano natin yan nagamitin? We also have this, uh, what we call, closed contour integral. Ano ba yung closed control integral na yan? Okay. Um, ex extending the analogy of calculating the work, we can also calculate the work required to move an object around a closed contour. Okay. The closed contour integral of A is also called the circulation of A around path C. So, ano yan? Pwede rin pala nating mag-calculate yung work done, work by a vector on a close, on a close uh, contour using this formula. So, nabago lang yung ating uh, symbol. Nagkaroon lang tayo ng circle sa loob. No? Tawag natin dito is... Uh, the close contour integral. Okay? Ayan. So, meron lang tayong circle sa loob, pero same pa rin yung ating um, elements. So, ayan. So, mas mahaba. So, we now have the magnitude yung ating differential of length and the cosine of the smaller angle between them. Ayan. Okay? Ano pa? Itong close contoured integral of a particular vector field, pwede natin niya magamit to uh, classify or to characterize, describe a particular vector field. Okay. We have two, uh, two types of field. We have what we call conservative field. Ano ibig sabihin yan? Uh, a vector field whose circulation around 
arbitrary closed path is zero. So napaka-importante nito na ibig sabihin pag kinuha pala natin yung uh, close control close contour integral at equal yan sa zero. Masasabi natin na yung field na yun is a conservative field. Okay? The total network done by the field or against the field in any closed path is zero. So, yun yung definition ng conservative field with regards doon sa pagkuha ng mga circulation or closed contour integral. We also have this non-conservative field. Of course, contrasting the definition of conservative field, it is a vector field whose circulation around an arbitrary closed path is non-zero. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, kung kunin natin yung ating closed, control, closed contour integral and uh, hindi mag-equal yan sa zero, ang tawag na natin dun sa field na yan is non-conservative field. Okay? So, moving in a closed path requires network to be done either by the field or against the field. We call them non-conservative field. Okay? So, na-discuss na natin yung line integral. Nature ng line integral. Saan natin yan pwede magamit. No? Let us try to solve uh, a problem here. We have a given vector field. F is equal to x hat 2x plus y hat 2y. Assume F is a force, which is a vector quantity. What is the work done in moving from point 2, that is a point 2, 5, 0 to point 3, located at 0 and 3? So, pinapahanap pala sa atin dito is yung work done in moving from point 2 to point 3. So, paano yan? So, just to illustrate kung ano itsura ng vector field na to. So, wala tayong Z uh, axis. So, medyo plain lang siya. From the origin going to outwards, papunta sa uh, equation ng 2x tsaka 2y. So, yun yung ating direction ng mga uh, vectors. Okay? And uh, sinama na rin natin dito yung uh, kung saan dadaan yung force. No? From point 2, that is 5 and 0, to point 3, which is 0 and 3. Okay? Yan. So, ano ang una natin gagawin? Of course, yung formula natin, the work daw is equal to the integral from point 1 to point 2 force the dot product ng force and yung ating differential and uh, since yung ating differential or yung ating force is in uh, the Cartesian right, Cartesian siya dapat yung ating uh, differential of length, dapat nasa Cartesian din siya. Okay? So, x, y, and z. So, ang gagamitin natin dyan is uh, uh, x hat dx plus y hat dy. So, wala yung z dahil uh, hindi naman siya uh, walang nag-vary dun sa z, z. So, itong dalawa lang. Okay? So, yan. So, gagamitin natin yung formula na yan and yung F. And kukunin natin yung dot product. Okay? So, dot product is the sum ng mga uh, sum of product ng mga scalar components ng dalawang vectors. Okay? So, yan. Sinubstitute na natin yung mga values and 
Ito yung ating F. Ito naman yung ating D, L. So, what we will do is to multiply lang yung mga components. Okay? So, ano ang sagot natin dito? Uh, work is uh, the integral from point 2 to point 3 ng 2x dx plus 2y dy. Yan. Okay. And then, ano na susunod natin gagawin? We will now evaluate yung integral na to given these points. Okay. So, sa x, gagamitin natin yung mga limits ng x, no? And sa y, ganun din. So, i-distribute natin yung ating integral. Ganito na yung lalabas dyan. Okay. Sa x, since ang variable natin is x yung ating limits from point 2, which is 5, to point 3, which is 0. Tama. Plus, sa so y naman, from 0 to 3. So, with, in, with this case, pwede na nating ma-solve yung integral, right? And uh, sa una, integral of 2x dx, magiging x squared over 2 yan, right? Times 2, so mag-cancel yung dalawang 2, kamatitira dito x squared. Similarly, dito naman y squared. Tama? Kaya, i-evaluate natin yung x squared from 5 to 0 plus y squared from 0 to 3. So, substituting the values, we now have um, 0 squared minus 5 squared, okay? Plus 3 squared minus 0 squared. We have the work equals negative 16 joules, okay? So, ano ang ibig sabihin niyan? Dahil yung work natin is negative, it decreases the potential energy of the system. So, or kumbaga, the work is done by the field Katulad, for example, uh, nag-slide tayo sa, or nag-slide tayo sa water slide, okay? Yung gravitational field performs the work for us. And the potential energy uh, nung slider is bumababa, okay? Next. Okay. We have here a force. The force F is equal to X hat. Times 2X minus 1 minus Y plus y hat x plus y plus z plus z hat times 2z minus x newtons, okay, force yan, kaya newtons, given yan. We are to calculate the total work required to move a body in a circle of radius 1, centered at the origin. So, sabi dito, the circle is in the x, y plane, and that is z is equal to 0. So, para mahanap natin yung work na yan, na pinapanap sa atin, we should uh, convert this problem into cylindrical coordinate system para mas madali natin yung masok. Bakit? Kasi yung ating z, 0 na yan, tapos meron tayong radius. So, mas madaling mag-solve mag kung nasa cylindrical coordinate system tayo. Okay? So, ang given sa atin, itong force na to. Okay? 
So, since at 0 na yung ating z, so, mawawala na to, di ba? Mawawala to, mawawala na rin to. So, ano na lang may iwan sa atin? Yung ating f is now equal to x hat 2x minus y plus y hat x plus y. Yung nawala na yung z. Plus z hat times x. Nawala na rin yung 2 uh, 2z. Okay. So I guess this is minus pala, no? Minus. Anyway, minus 2. So, the work is uh, now equal to the close contour integral kasi circle yung ating object or yung ating path kaya close contour integral yung gagamitin natin of f dot dl. So, ano nang gagawin natin? Is substitute na natin yung values or functions ng f tsaka ng dl dito sa formula na to and that will be itong particular na to is yung ating f right at ito naman yung ating dl so ito ay minus again anyway hindi rin naman pala yan magagamit no so ayan So, anong susunod natin gagawin? I-perform natin yung dot product. Kaya naman, ang mangyayari dito, x, uh, 2x minus dy times dx, and then sa y naman, x plus y dy. So, yan na lang inatira sa ating um, integrand. Okay? So, 2x minus y dx plus x plus y dy. So, ano na susunod natin gagawin? Ang gagawin natin ay i-convert natin to cylindrical coordinates yung x, y, and uh, dx and dy natin para mas madali natin ma-solve. Okay. So, okay. Recall lang natin yung ating uh, picture on the transformation between cylindrical and Cartesian system. So, ano lang ang main takeaway dito? So, itong x, gagamitin natin ito. Yan. Para makonvert yung mga x natin into r and uh, phi, yung y naman makonvert into r and phi, and then yung z, same lang naman yan. So, we now have x is equal to r cosine phi. And uh, yung r natin, kanina, no? Na-discuss na natin yan. Or, nabanggit na natin na yung ating radius is equal to 1. Okay? Kaya naman, sinubstitute na natin dito yung particular value na yan. So, that leaves us to x is equal to cosine phi and dx now becomes negative sine of phi d phi. Okay? So, hindi ka na masyadong pagtuunan ng pansin yan. Yung pag uh, de-derive, no? i-recall nyo na lang yung uh, studies nyo sa differential calculus. Anyway, sa y naman, we have y is equal to r sine of phi and yung r natin again is equal to 1. That is, y is equal to y, 1 sine of phi and yung ating dy is equal to cosine phi d phi. So, meron na tayong x, meron tayong dx, meron tayong y, at meron tayong dy. Pwede na nating palitan tong mga values na nakikita natin dito para ang ating variable would be matitira na lang yung phi. No? d phi d phi. And Ang kagandahan dyan is mapapadali yung ating integration kasi 
uh, yung ating limits is uh, isa na lang kasi isa lang yung ating variable no so paano na So, once napalitan na natin yan, sa x, pinalitan ko ng cosine. Okay. Ito yan. Sa so, y naman, pinalitan ko yan ng sine. Okay. And then, yung, x dito, yung bx, okay. pinalitan ko yan ng negative sine phi dv. Then, yung dy, pinalitan ko naman ng cosine phi dy phi. Okay? So, meron na tayong integrand na nasa single variable, which is yung phi. Now, we are ready to find yung ating limits. Okay? Yan. So, paano natin makukuha yung limits? Ang sabi, the circle is in the xy plane. Yan, di ba? x, y plane uh, 0 and yung ating uh, z is 0. Therefore, yung ating angle will begin at uh, 0 pi cot hanggang makagkaroon siya ng 2 pi. Okay? So, ang sabi pala dito is to get yung ating work para dun sa buong line ng circle na yun, gagamitin natin limits is phi is equal to 0 papunta sa phi is equal to 2 pi. Okay? So that's the same with using 0 and 360 to get yung buong body ng uh, circle, or buong line ng circle. Therefore, yung ating work is now equal to so ano ba ang nangyari dito? Bakit naging 1 minus cosine? So, yung ating cosine, pag minultiply natin yan sa sine phi, so, meron tayong 2 cosine phi, sine phi, at dito naman, meron din tayong 1. No? So, ang natira dyan is uh, neg 1 na lang, negative sine phi, cosine phi, ito na yun. And then, ito naman, naging sine squared phi, right? At ito naman, naging plus cosine squared phi, which is equal to 1. Kaya ito yan. No? Itong sine squared phi plus cosine squared phi is equal to 1. Kaya tayo nagkaroon ng 1 dyan. Okay? Pakitandaan. Paano na susunod? We are now ready to evaluate itong ating integral. So, again, i-distribute lang muna natin. Oops. I-distribute natin itong phi. Pupunta rito, tsaka pupunta rito. Ano mangyari? Yung ating integration would be the integral of the integral of d phi minus the integral of sine phi cosine phi. phi. Okay. Remember, yung ating limits is from 0 to 2 pi. Okay? And once we get yung ating result dito sa integral na yan, which is, uh, let's say, Ba? Cosine squared phi. Yan. Ba? Cosine squared phi. Once na inevaluate kasi natin yan, sine man yan o cosine, ang nagiging, magiging result is 0. Kasi sine of 0 is 0 and sine of 2 pi is 0. Ganon din sa cos, uh, yeah, sa sine. Okay? So, ang mangyayari, magiging zero na yung sorry. 
magiging zero na tong part na to dahil sa sine na yan, sine phi. Okay? Kaya ang matitira na lang is the integral of d phi from 0 to, to pi. Okay? And that translates to work is equal to 2 pi of joules. Okay? So that is the total work required to move a body okay, in a circle of radius 1 with this force. Okay? okay? So ayun. Uh, that ends my presentation. So we touch on some basics ng vector calculus, kung ano yung mga pag-usapan pa natin. And then we discuss on the line integral and uh, solve two illustrative examples uh, ng line integral. I hope meron kayong matutunan dito sa video na to. And uh, on the next video, we'll discuss surface integral. So same approach. Iba lang yung kanyang uh, mga integrals. Medyo mas mahirap siya dahil marami ng integration na gagawin. Uh, well, anyway, uh, see you on that uh, video. Keep safe and maraming salamat.